Hello there. This is our first time trying the podcast. With the coronavirus, we decided we'd try to at least have a podcast service that people could download from our church. So let's begin. Turn your Bibles, if you were with me. Uh, 1 John. Just read four verses there. As usual, I've got to pull my glasses. Verse 15 says, If we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, petitions that we desire of him. And if any man see his brother sin, a sin which is unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give, it to, give him for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death that do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. He that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that the wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God, where the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding, so we may know him that is true. We are in him, and he that is true, even his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together, to gather through this podcast. We ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Four times here in this portion of Scripture, John says, we know. John, in this epistle, as he writes it, does not argue the truth. He doesn't debate it. He doesn't dispute it. He accepts it and says it and settles it and says that's it truth is truth John in the last days was battling heresy in the church that made deep in roots and he's rather confrontational in the book to John there was no such thing as a gray area no right or wrong or no great right or gray area it's right or wrong truth to the end uh, of God, truth of God, no other truth, good and evil, salvation through Christ or damnation without Christ. It's either Christ or the Antichrist. Now John today will be called intolerant. He accepted no other views. He didn't debate it. He didn't discuss it. He didn't look at it for uh, a tolerant uh, point of view. We live in tolerant times. Acts chapter 17 verse 21 says, For all the Athenians and the strangers, which were there spent their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new thing. In many ways, we're caught up in that today, some new thing. Pastors, by the very spiritual nature, are nonconformists. Their character is to lead uh, the church, to lead the Christians, to lead the saints, to tell the truth, no matter what, uh, where the chips may fall. Most today, most of the pastors today are not intolerant. They tolerate a lot of things they shouldn't. Now the point here is that the coronavirus, in uncertain times, 151 countries have the virus. It started 7,215 miles away. And yet now we're being told to wear masks, separate, shut down, settle in where we're at. And China yet supplies <clears throat> all that we have, medically speaking. There's been churches that are defying the government ask of a uh, shutdown. They're not telling you you can't have church. They're asking you to do it for safety's sake, to refrain. But a pastor in Baton Rouge named Tony Spell has been meeting in a mega church in groups of 50 in video. He then distributed to his church anointed handkerchiefs to provide, he called it, healing virtues. Handkerchiefs that he prayed over and he gave to the people. That's like having an amulet, a uh, charm, or idols. And I know where they get it from, but Paul says that's not true. We shouldn't be fooled with it, those type of things. In Romans chapter 13, we were told politics, we're told that the church is out of politics. 
but the times were forced to speak out. Abortion is spiritual, but it's politics. And we speak against abortion all the time. We fight against it. We give money, uh, dressers full of clothes. We send Christmas cards out. We follow the resource center a flip when it comes to pregnancy. Now we're faced with the coronavirus has quarantined us. So who do we obey? Do we obey the government? Do we obey the law? Do we obey grace? What we need is certainty. What we want is certainty. What we need is confidence in God. Confidence by, is a Greek word. means certainty, security, and safety. So let me speak to you a couple minutes about certainty. Paul says in verse 11 through 13, I have written unto you. That's certainty. He is recording it written for us. It's supposed to be refreshing and reviving and renewing to us. It's to reaffirm the promises of God to us. What is the promise of God that's most important to us? It's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That we believe in the name of the Son of God. That we may know we have eternal life. That our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. These are things we need to, to clarify be sure about and certain about that we serve God. He's going on record that Jesus Christ is the eternal God. It says, in the name of the Son, that we shall be saved. Name above every name. That's what it says in Philippians. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. That Jesus in the Old Testament is Yahweh. Yahweh means salvation. In Exodus, Moses references the name of Yahweh. Causing the rescuer, the deliverer, or the one that saves. What do we base this certainty? We base it on Jesus. We base it on divine birth, the divine sacrifice, the divine resurrection. Jesus Christ is our living proof of what God has provided. He numbered with the dead. His heart was literally broken, silent. His body made ready and buried. And then by divine power of God, the Father, he rose from the grave, rose from the grave clues, and gave life. He's the first proof of the resurrection for us, first fruits. He's the Lord, the one forevermore, an everlasting God, who lives forevermore, sits on the right hand of the throne of God in heaven, being an intercessor for us. That's a certainty, God says, a certainty written, recorded for us in his word. Then there's confidence. Confidence comes by faith in God. When we look at the world affairs and the politics of our time, the only confidence we have is in our salvation. Confidence that God hears our prayers. Due to this coronavirus, it's confidence that God hears our prayers for our nation. We're not responding in panic with our prayers. But we are praying that God will lead our government leaders to make the right decisions. We're praying that our spiritual leaders will make good spiritual decisions. We're praying for our medical leaders that they'll make good medical uh, decisions for us. We pray for those afflicted within our own ministry. We know one of one of Tom Hopper that's battling for his life in the hospital with the virus. We pray for him. He's afflicted. We pray and are thankful that we're not afflicted. The strength of our prayer is that we will understand that but it will be heard in heaven, that Jesus Christ will hear our prayers. We ask according to his will. We honor his name. Those are confident confidence that we have. So we have certainty. We have confidence. And then we have comfort. John chapter verse 18 and John chapter first John 5. John is stating the truth here that every saint faces, and that is a sin in our life. He tells us that if we claim whether we do not sin, that we live a perfect life, we live above sin, and somehow we keep from sinning, everybody else is wrong. So we're deceived. But we don't believe that lie. The Bible teaches us to be saved once. Once saved, always saved. Can we sin after we're saved? Yes, we can sin. It may seem at times that, that Jesus isn't protecting us because we get sick. We have different things happen in our life. 
uh, circumstances, situations, <clears throat> just like the regular people in the world. But we're supposed to live above that. We're supposed to live in the sense that we pray and believe that God provides. He protects us. That should give us comfort that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. We have an adversary who Jesus protects us. That's the enemy. That's Satan, the lion. Sometimes we fall for his schemes. Sometimes we fall for his lie. Times like that, we don't need anointed handkerchiefs. We don't need amulets. We don't need healing hands. We don't need to lay our touch on someone. We need to pray and ask God to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we know that feeling from inside we've been made whole, cleansed, and forgiven. We give him an opportunity to Satan, and he'll take it. He'll act. We have this certainty, this confidence. It gives us comfort. The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, gives us comfort. We have been forgiven. We've been washed in the blood, soul-cleansing blood. And there is power in the blood. We are certain, we are confident that we are His, that He is ours. Our soul belongs to the Lord. We don't get saved from this flesh and blood body. It's the soul that gets saved. We're the children of God. That's a precious position we've been put in. When someone makes you their child, that's precious. That's something they've given to us that we didn't have before. Something we care for. Something we, we monitor. Something we watch over. A priceless position. We can't buy our salvation. We can't buy somebody's prayers. We can't earn it on our own merits. It's given to us in the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. We have a predestinated position that one day we're going to be with him, that he's going to prepare for us a place to remain with him, that we serve in a prior time now, a present time. We serve here until he calls us up home. For whatever reason, whatever time, we don't know. But we serve him. We're not called to just believe. We're not called to just belong. We're called to become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're adopted into the family of God. We belong to him. He calls us his children. In fact, this very portion of scripture when John ends it, it says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. He's talking about these healing handkerchiefs. He's talking about these Statues we would pray to. He's talking about monuments we would make to create uh, something in the image of God. He's talking about charms and good wish things that we believe somebody, we pray to them, they're going to protect us. But none of that's true. Only Jesus Christ. So what do we know? We know he hears our prayers. We know he has forgiveness for us. We know we're in the light of Christ as we walk and talk. We know the true God. John says four times, we know. These are things we should take down, not jot down in our mind and our heart. And say, look, this, we belong to the Lord. Who says Jesus Christ, a living proof? That's a certainty that we have. And because he rose again and he saved many souls, we've seen people to save beside ourselves. That's the confidence we have. So we have the certainty, we have the confidence. Then we need the comfort in the troubled times. He's our comfort. He's our provider. He's our protector. He's predestined a place for us to go to be with him one day, and we shall know him as our Savior. We thank the Lord for what he's given to us. We thank the Lord for what he's provided. It's just a small sample of a podcast that we can give, and we'll try to do them each week and get better at it than we do them, to provide for our family, our church family. We hope you meet with us on Easter Sunday, 10.30 in the morning. We're going to meet. That's the one service we're going to have, and we'll make decisions then as a church what we want to do. In the meantime, we should pray for our government, pray for our leaders, Pray for the pastors. Pray for the church. Pray for one another. Pray for those that are afflicted. 
May God bless you. In Christ's name we pray.